Welcome to part one of the Paul Basics Guide for Tekken 7 version 3.11. This guide is intended as a primer just to get you started on learning the character. With that, let's get to it. Back one is a quick, safe homing poke that gives plus two on hit and has an extension for more damage. This is a hugely important tool, but note that the second hit can be ducked. Down forward one is an I-14 poke with an extension. You can also go into sway with down forward one back for more versatility. Down one is a long range I-15 mid poke, can go into full crouch by holding down. Paul's low game is really strong, exemplified by back four, side step three, quarter circle forward three, and down back four. All of these are unseeable and with the exception of down back four, provide plus frames on hit. They are all also relatively safe on block. Side step three and quarter circle forward three provide free follow ups on counter hit. Paul's down four string, also known as Demolition Man, is his primary scary low. It's unseeable, knocks down, and does a chunky damage with the potential for wall splat. Forward 12 is a plus on block mid that forces crouch. Very good pressure move and knocks down on counter hit, which can produce a wall splat. Paul has a generic down forward 2, an I-15 safe mid launcher that has a tendency to go under highs. It will not launch crouchers unless counter hit, but otherwise, spam it will. Back 1 plus 2 is one of the better power crushes in the game. It is high, but is otherwise safe, it has good range, and can wall splat. Down back 2 is a ground hitting mid that you will use a lot in Oki situations. It gives a counter hit juggle and is relatively safe due to pushback. Paul lacks long range options, so forward forward 2 is a primary tool for that purpose. Forward forward 2 just frame 1 is safe but ends high. Forward forward 2 1 is mid but punishable, but you can also cancel forward forward 2 1 by holding back, which gives you a relatively safe way to get in. Otherwise, you'll have to be on your toes to use this as a whip punch. Back 3 is a safe I-14 launcher that tracks to his left, which is his weak side. It is however high and has limited range, so be careful. Paul's crouch dash, which is done quarter circle forward or down down forward, is an important offensive tool that we will discuss later. Note for now that he has several options from crouch dash, so you should get comfortable with the stance. Paul's sway is very similar in utility to his crouch dash, so again, note for now that it is a stance that you should get comfortable with. Up back 2 is a safe mid homing move that gives big damage on counter hit. It can also wall splat on normal hit, relatively quick for what it is. Crouch dash 1 plus 2 is Paul's rage drive, and it's extremely good. It's a souped up version of his crouch dash 2. It wall splats from an absurd range and does beefy damage. It's also plus 9 on block at the wall due to the wall shove, plus you get a little bit of wall damage. Paul's super is notable because it can be cancelled to extend juggles, allowing him to get considerably more damage than he normally would. In its simplest form, the Crouch Dash mix-up is Crouch Dash 2 and Crouch Dash Demo. Both options come with considerable risk, but offer comparable rewards, particularly near the wall, although some characters do struggle to punish Quarter Circle Forward 2. You can, however, play a much more expansive Crouch Dash game. You can do Crouch Dash 4 for safety, which is simply a wall standing 4 out of Crouch Dash. You can do Crouch Dash 3 plus 4, a safe mid-knee that offers a small follow-up. You can do Crouch Dash 3, which can give you plus frames on hit or a combo on counter hit. Or you can do Down Down Forward, which will give you a Crouch Dash motion, and then you can do While Standing 3, which you can then visually confirm into While Standing 3 2. In fact, you will notice a lot of good Paul players are using Crouch Dash While Standing 3 as it offers you a fairly long range mid check with the potential for more damage, particularly next to the wall. Paul Sway offers a little more in terms of complexity than his Crouch Dash, but it's important to remember that he's moving backwards instead of forward so you have to play Sway moves well for them to be effective. Otherwise, you'll whiff a lot. Understand that Sway isn't intended for mix-ups per se. There's only one low out of Sway that is minimal reward, so instead harass and force your opponent into bad situations and bad decisions. 
Note that down forward 1 and 3 2 can go into sway by simply pressing back. This gives plus frames, but none of his sway moves are fast enough to create lockdown on block. However, they're still good for initiating pressure, particularly down forward 1. Otherwise, let's quickly go through his sway options. Quarter circle back 4 is the sway move you'll likely use most often. It's plus 1 on block, homing, relatively quick, has good range, and offers big damage on counter hit. Many Paul players use this as their primary neutral tool, almost like a poke. Just remember that it's high. Quarter circle back 2 is safe, mid, decent damage and range, and fairly quick. Heavy use of quarter circle back 2 at the wall is recommended to safety hunt from wall splats and complement your lows. Sway 1 is the slowest of all the sway tools but offers significant pressure in return. It's mid, plus 1 on block, and forces crouch, gives a counter hit juggle, and on normal hit, leaves your opponent in a really crappy position. Sway 12 is a big mid launcher that goes under highs. Very useful to catch people ducking or trying to jab challenge the sway. Finally, Sway 3 is the only sway low. Bad for mix-ups since it's negative 9 on hit, launchable on block, and doesn't track very well. The upside is that it's an instant high crush and gives a launch on counter hit. You can continue the string to check people trying to challenge it and make it a little safer. Paul stands out in that he tends to get considerably more damage from his pokes than most characters in the game. It's one way he slows people down. His move list is not gigantic, so it shouldn't be hard to make these moves a core part of your game. Sidestep 3 and quarter circle forward 3 are plus on hit and have counter hit follow-ups. They can also potentially wall splat. They are negative 12 and negative 13 on block respectively, which is extremely safe for the speed and potential reward. Back 1-2 can be finished for a chunky 33 damage, and again, if you're near the wall, you may be looking at a wall splat for absurd damage from an I-12 poke. Down forward 1 may not be chunky on its own, but it has both a canned extension, the first two hits of which are a natural combo, and it has the sway cancel. Nail your opponent with any of the follow-ups, and it's going to hurt. As an example, down forward 1-1 one, one cannot be interrupted, so you can catch button happy players with a full down forward 1 string, which gives you a crouch dash 2 or a wall splat. If they're trying to duck down forward 1-1, one, one, down forward 1 back and play the sway game. Lots of versatility here. If you want a safer poke than down forward 1, just abuse down 1. It's unnecessary to ever continue the string since that's very risky, and instead harass at range. Counter hunting is a pretty simple concept, but it's important to discuss Paul's ability to stop people from hitting buttons, whether from a distance or from point blank. Panic moves such as down 12, forward 1 plus 4, back forward 1, sway 1 plus 2, and sway 3 are all common to prevent aggression. Sway 3 and sway 1 plus 2 high crush, so they're useful to stop people jab checking you when you go in. Sway 4 and Sway 1 will make people second guess trying to poke in from range. Up back 2 and again Sway 4 can freeze people trying to sidestep and immediately attack. He also has two kinds of hop kick, up forward 4 and up forward 3 plus 4. And of course he has good old reversals. Work them all into your game. Again, nothing complex here, but Paul stands out for how dangerous and safe his OP is. Nearly all of his lows hit grounded, as can some of his more powerful mids. For close range tech rollers, his homing moves are incredibly powerful, and he can easily realign himself to bring Demo Man and other linear moves into play. The star of the show, however, is down back 2. It's negative 11 on block, but due to pushback, it is nearly impossible for most characters to punish. Not only does it hit grounded, but it's also a counter hit punch, so Paul gets big reward for those trying to use get up kicks. It catches spring kick too, so it further protects against that option. The presence of this move forces people to try to get up and block it, but doing so also allows Paul to bring his powerful 50-50 mix ups into play. Let me be a broken record for a second. Paul's grab game is not complicated, but is very solid, especially for a non-grappler. Let's run through them real quick. So his 2 plus 4 side switches, his 1 plus 3 gives decent oki. His forward forward 1 plus 2 will wall splat, but if it's broken, Paul's the one that gets face splatted, so be careful. 
Down one plus two gives good Oki and also floor breaks. Two plus four back is a two break, which is the primary benefit, although it can wall splat at goofy angles. Back one plus four is a one break and side switches. It also gives a slide wall splat, so nothing guaranteed, but you do get situational advantage from it. And finally, down forward one plus three, crouch dash two. Another one break, but this one wall splats for heavy wall damage. In summary, Paul is an incredibly good character. He has a little bit of complexity, but mostly is just a straightforward big damage boy. Be on the lookout for part two of this guide where we'll go over some basic combos and his punishers. Otherwise, practice your fundamentals and death fist away. Before we end the video, reminder to come join us on Twitch. I also got the Facebook and Twitter if you want to reach out there. Otherwise, I have to shill for just a moment and ask that you please consider supporting the channel on Patreon. I promise, every little bit helps way more than you might think. More support equals more content more often. It also lets me enlist the skills of other talented folks. Probably most importantly, it lets me keep my content as ad-free as I can. Beyond that, thank you very much for watching and have a good one.